Hey everybody, Mike here. I'm going to be giving you in this module a, an overview of Schoology and some of the different features and things like that so that you can uh, start to understand this learning management system, which not only are we using to deliver our PD, but we also use that as our main learning management system, grades 3 through 12. So for those not familiar, uh, Schoology has uh, kind of a social Facebooky type feel to it uh, with uh, when you land on the page you'll see some recent activity and you might see announcements that either come from your building they might be things from specific classes where you've given an update to a class uh, this is a place where uh, if you post an update here you can select which class you want it to go to uh, which section you want it to go to as a way to uh, communicate it's a landing page that, especially at secondary, our students land on so that they see things in ways that they might not get if it was just an email because, you know, kids don't check email quite as much, but they do see these updates when they get into Schoology. It also ends up in the update for that specific class as well, and we'll look at that. Um, across the top, you have different menus. So here you'll see courses. Now, because we sync our Schoology system with our student information system, Infinite Campus, all of the course shells where you will be putting content actually come from Infinite Campus. And we haven't started that sync yet, but that will be happening this week. And so you'll see your classes starting to show up in there. Across the top, we've got, I've got some different PD classes that I've been giving. And indeed, here's our course uh, for new teacher orientation right here. And so you can get to that. Now realize that you only have access to 12 classes when you look in this format. But if you click on my courses over here, it's going to give you a listing of all the courses that are current and that you have access to. And so I can see that I have many more than 12 classes here. And part of that is because I'm a Schoology administrator. The other thing that's important to note with that is because you only see 12 at the top, if you need to rearrange the order of your classes, you simply click reorder courses over here. Once you've gone to courses, my courses, oh, captain, my captain. And now I can click and drag these courses into the order I want. So maybe right now, new teacher orientation is my main class. So I want that at the top and I can just drag and do that. And when I close the window, now when I click here, that's on top and it's the first one in the upper left here. Going back to my courses, some other things that you may want to be able to do is click create a course. And by creating a course, you can start building content in Schoology and practicing with it. And then once that content is set, you can actually move it into uh, the new course shells, or you can also save it to your resources, and we'll talk about that in a second. The other thing to note on this Courses My Courses page is that once you hit the end of a term, for example, for secondary, uh, at the high school level, a lot of our classes are only semester classes. Once you hit the end of the semester, those classes are going to end up being archived. And if you click on Archive, you'll see classes from other sections and you still have access to them and can get to that material. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to show you across the top, so those are courses and we'll get into a course. So if I, I'm here, uh, an example course, I'm going to show this ninth grade physics class. This is kind of what the student will see and how you'll teach out of the class. Uh, for the high school, we've got some expectations, and you'll see in this module at the bottom below the video here, uh, we have kind of our tights on Schoology on the expectations of what consistency looks like across courses. Uh, we learn through distance learning that there's many ways of doing things in Schoology, and having a little bit more consistency in our expectations and having things set up a certain way is going to make things much easier for students. But more importantly, it's also going to make things easier for parents who are trying to help more dependent learners. And so following some of those guidelines, it's going to be really important. 
Uh, when you look at the class as the teacher, we've got a course image here. Um, at the high school, they've chosen to have kind of a week at a glance type uh, look to it, more in a chart form. Uh, the middle schools are going to be utilizing a little video screencast of what the week looks like, and uh, you'll learn more about that in the coming weeks. The other thing that's really important, especially for kids, is this upcoming on the right-hand side. Now, here we are in just this physics class, and I see the upcoming things for that class. So if I'm a student, especially on a day maybe when I'm not on campus, I can just go here, click, and see what my agenda is going to be. Now, this agenda might be something that's just even built into assignment if I have something to turn in that day, or it could be an event as I've set up here. The important thing to note is that if you do have things that require links to something, it's good to put those links in there so that right away I'm on here and I can click on the link to take me to where I want to go. If I need to get back to the main part of the class, there's a little breadcrumb trail type thing here. The other thing to note in Schoology is that we've got uh, folders and you can see how those are organized and you can actually have folders within there. And if I click the little chevron on the side that it can expand that out and see what's inside there. Or I can click on here to get to that information. Uh, I mentioned that courses have updates too. You can click here to see your updates. As a teacher, you also have access to the gradebook. And this is our official gradebook for secondary. And so uh, as assignments get created into the course materials, uh, they can be, uh, you can get, get that information in, in here. It'll show up in your gradebook and you can go ahead and grade right here, or you can actually grade on the assignment itself. And we'll get into more of that detail and some of those resources uh, later uh, in our training in the coming weeks. In the course, you also have the ability to view what the student sees. So if I want to view this course as the student in the class, in this case Marvin Mouse, I can click on Marvin's name and now I'm viewing it more like Marvin sees, because in Schoology, I can turn on and off different components and unpublish things if I'm not ready for students to see them. So maybe I just want to show the first unit or the first and second unit. Uh, I can do that. Um, I'm going to go back to the course now. The other thing that's kind of important to note is that you have the ability in Schoology to drag your resources just by drag and drop, I can rearrange the, fol the folders. And so as we're teaching, especially at a distance, it's sometimes good to have that current unit at the top and you can simply drag to move that up there. We don't use attendance in Schoology, but we do have the ability to view members and see who's in the course and manage that information. If I wanted to add a co-teacher or maybe it's a para or a um, Java like that I want to add to my course, I can do that by adding members and I can make that person a uh, an administrator in the class. The other thing that's nice is this analytics piece because I might want to look and see you know, before I'm going to call a parent and talk about a kid who may not be engaging quite as much, I can look and see when did this student engage last? Oh, it wasn't, it's been a long time since they were actually in the course. Uh, so you can kind of see that information. The other thing that's uh, useful as I go back to my breadcrumb trail is workload planning. And this is a feature that uh, we haven't used quite as much, but I think it'll be really important. Um, but here in this workload planning, you can go in and maybe I want to see what's going on. I want to give a test in a couple weeks from now. I can go in and I can see, are there any assessments, two or more items, uh, or things that are going to be happening that might, I mean, I may want to change the date of my assessment if they've already got four assessments in place. So those are some things that you can look at there uh, with that. If I go back to my main section of Schoology, 
Um, some other features that we have, we do have groups as an option, and those groups allow you to uh, share information and things. So here you can see some example groups. We have an elementary curriculum group where some elementary curriculum can be shared. Uh, we've got Edina Media Specialists have a group that I belong to. There's some implementation groups and other things, just general Schoology educators and Midwest support groups that I belong to uh, for other districts that utilize Schoology. And then the other thing I want to talk about here in this section is resources. And the resources are things that have come from other courses that I can save to my resources. So you see I have a list of resources here. And so I can take an entire course and back it up. So maybe at the end of the term, I want a nice clean copy of my course saved to my resources so that at the beginning of the next term, I can just move that into my class. You can do that here. You also have the ability to have group resources. So for PLCs to be able to have a group in Schoology, if you have those groups, you can set it up in such a way that uh, those resources will be be there just for that specific group. So here's that elementary curriculum one where you've got folders for every grade level. Uh, you can also set up uh, different components of apps. And so linking different apps that you might be using like Google Drive, YouTube, some others uh, to be able to utilize those that can be there and you can authorize those apps like that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the tools section. Uh, under tools, one of the features that you may use quite a bit is this advisor dashboard. So if you have an advisory class or you want to see how a student is doing, you can go into this advisor dashboard. And if I just type the name mouse for Marvin Mouse, for example, I can click here on Marvin and I'm going to get a look kind of what a parent sees when it comes to the classes that they're in and how they're doing in those classes. And I can see right away here in this summary how they're doing. I can even go in and look at specific classes. I also have the ability of seeing what their upcoming work is or if they have any outstanding work as a way to uh, connect and support them. So if I go in and I see Marvin has lots of outstanding assignments, we can have a conversation about that either through a Google Meet if they're at home or possibly uh, during an advisory if they're face-to-face -face at school and have that conversation and kind of offer support there. So that's a feature that you have available to you under tools, that advisor dashboard. One thing to note about this is that when you're typing, you'll see the name will come up, pop up. Don't hit enter, but just click on the name of the student once, once it comes up to get to that. If you hit enter, it's not going to work for you. A couple other things of note right up here is an app center. And the one that you'll probably be using in this case is called the SGY data exchange. And this is going to allow you to sync the grades from your gradebook at secondary to infinite campus. And it's going to be important. And you'll see some instructions on that in the coming weeks on making sure that all of the sections that you have coming over from infinite campus, have it synced so that your gradebook information goes back. And that's an overall grade that goes into a task in uh, Infinite Campus called the In Progress from Schoology task. So that overall grade goes in there. The next thing to show you over here is the calendar. So you do have a Schoology calendar and you can set it up so you can see different components. Now here, um, one of the features of this that you can do to kind of customize it for yourself is that you can make each of these a different color. So maybe new teacher, Edina teacher orientation, I'm going to make green. Notice that it made that change to my calendar down here. Maybe I want this distance learning class to be a different color. And this class, which is a PD class that we did this summer, give me this color. And now those things show up that way as a way to color code the, the calendar. Again, each course has their own individual calendar, but when you're up here and you click on calendar, you can see the full view of all the different things going on in your different classes. The next section to show you is messages. 
Uh, messages in Schoology allow you to send messages to anybody in the system. So it could be a colleague, a teacher, could be a student, could be a parent. And if I go back to my courses, I can show you that you can also send it to an entire section or multiple sections of a course. So if I'm teaching this class, I could go into my course options here and say send a message. <coughs> Excuse me. And I can send it to all members. I can choose members, which would just go to students or parents. So I have that option. So if I wanted to send something just to parents, I could do that. If I do all members, it's going to go to parents and students. And when I type this up, and I hit send, it's going to post that message in Schoology, but it's also going to generate an email that will go to the student as well as the parent. All of our students have Gmail as their mail. It's a at isd273.org email, whereas all of our teacher emails are at edinaschools.org. Uh, and that same email that you use for Outlook is the same one that works in Gmail. Um, so that's a way that you can get and receive messages. Now, in Outlook, if you get a response to that, sometimes those Schoology messages end up in your clutter or in your junk mail, so you have to check for that. But you can always see up here whether you have messages like that. The other thing I can show you is notifications. Here I see that somebody has submitted something, so I can just immediately click here and go in and look at that assignment if I wanted to. Um, if you give feedback or comments on an assignment in Schoology, the student will see that you've given feedback and they can click on it to view that feedback. So it's something that you want to teach kids to utilize this feature. Last thing I'm going to show you here is the menu where you can choose your profile. And with your profile, you can set up information about yourself. You can change and edit your picture so that you have an up-to-date picture. Um, you can even have a blog here. Some people do that, you don't have to, um, but that information is there. And there's even some student portfolios, but we haven't really utilized that in Schoology as much. Last thing I want to show you is your settings. The settings are kind of important because as you're looking at your notifications, you may want to set up notifications in such a way that have only certain things coming up on here. So for example, you can add a mobile device and have messages come through there. So that if something's overdue or other things like that, as a parent, you can have that turned on. If you don't want that, you can turn it off. And once you've got that set, you save at the bottom. So you can turn on all of these notifications and set it up in such a way that you get notifications, emails for certain things that you want to have notifications for. Last thing I want to show you in regards to notifications is that each of your individual courses have the ability to set notifications as well. So here in our new teacher course, I can click on notifications here in the upper right and I can check the box if I want to get submissions, like if somebody submits a test or quiz, I might want to get one or if something's overdue, I could get one depending. And all users have the ability to set those notifications. But that is a quick overview of Schoology. Again, underneath this video are more resources for you to kind of help support you. We will be again uh, rolling out some PD in the coming weeks on utilizing Schoology. It's important to note that uh, we also have the ability of linking your sections in Schoology. So let's say you have four sections of pre-AP 10, for example, a English language arts class. You can link those together so that you're only putting material for one class and all of the sections can access it. The other thing that's really nice is you have the ability of setting up grading groups within Schoology so that you can have only certain kids assigned to certain folders. Uh, maybe you're doing a group project and you only want uh, kids doing a certain thing to see that folder. They don't need to see the other. Um, it's also nice for differentiation. So we'll be rolling more information out about Schoology in the coming weeks. Thanks for viewing and have a great day.